It's about high time we've done one of these. A good old fashioned unboxing video. Welcome back to the Plays With Cars YouTube channel. My name's Michael and uh, this channel started, oh, in 2018. Um, and we actually started off with Hot Wheels videos. Uh, the Plays With Cars is literally about playing with cars. I mean, we had our real cars, but a lot of the videos were Hot Wheels, slot cars, uh, building model cars, that kind of stuff. And they're still some of our most popular videos. In fact, um, a, a very sizable percentage of the subscribers, uh, you're here for, for fun with little cars, not just the big ones. So uh, what I got is something special today. It's an unboxing video. I haven't been into the little car hobbies uh, a whole lot the last couple of years with everything going on, just with, with moving and uh, kids and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, they get things, play with them, but you know, not anything that's worthy of the channel. But this, this is worthy of the channel. Uh, these are HO scale slot cars, which is like my biggest number one love when it comes to anything other than real cars. Um, and these are vintage ones. Um, in fact, some of these are really, really, really rare ones. If they are indeed <laughs> what they look like when I purchased them online. I don't know. This is, this is a literal unboxing. I have not uh, opened this package yet. It is all sealed. The, the postman just dropped it off. So uh, if you're interested, hang on, uh, hang out with me and uh, stick with these cars. All right. So yeah, like I said, it's, uh, there are some HO skill slot cars that I bought online. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, of all things. Um, haven't done a whole lot on there. It's it's the Wild West. It's way, way less useful than Craigslist is. And uh, I really struggle with it. But also, boy, are there some deals on there. So, uh, and this would be, if, like I said, if this turns out to be the real deal, this would be one of those things. So let's take a look. Uh, and there was one car mainly, and I already see it, that I really wanted this lot for. Oh, this is nice. Little sub wrapping going on here this one right here so this is a aurora afx uh this is uh so aurora i don't know if necessarily if they invented the slot car but they were they were the big one they were the 400 pound gorilla in the room um, aurora came out with the vibrators and then the thunder jets and thunder jets absolutely took the world by storm after thunder jets their third generation was afx and this is indeed an original afx this one is a magnet traction i believe because it has magnets in it that are exposed uh but this particular car is a bmw m1 um which is a, you know really cool car in its own right but this particular paint scheme with the uh, the m stripe uh kind of funky ways over the top like that um, I distinctly remember my dad giving me one of these, uh, when I was a kid in kindergarten. So I was what, five years old. Um, and I still remember it to this day. And I don't know what happened to that car. I have all my other childhood cars, but that one's gone. I must've traded it away or, or blown it up in a crash or something. And I've always been looking for one since then. This particular paint scheme is actually pretty darn hard to find these days. Um, this chassis is in pretty good shape too. So it just needs a guide pin. Uh, looks like it's missing the springs for the uh, pickups. These are the pickup shoes. They run on the metal rails in the track. Uh, and they're supposed to have springs underneath them that keep them down. These, the springs are missing. So they're stucked up. So need to get a guide pin and some springs on there. But otherwise it looks like it would run uh, with not too much effort. But yeah, very, very excited to get this car. Obviously it's dirty. Um, that will clean up. It's also a little bit yellowed. There's a trick with these old molded and white slot cars. You put them in a hydrogen peroxide bath in the sunlight um, and it brightens all the white up and it doesn't touch anything else. Uh, works really well. I've done it a number of times. So I was super excited to get that car. Um, yeah, I, I'm so, so happy <laughs> with having that back in my collection. All right, a couple other ones. So this is also an AFX. Uh, this one is sitting actually on the very incorrect chassis. This is an AMRAC chassis. This is the precursor to row car um which became lifelike um and you can still buy lifelikes in other countries lifelike makes in my opinion some of the best and fastest chassis out there even these old amracks are just bonkers they have an independent front so instead of having an axle across the front like that afx did it's independently wheeled um so you don't get any drag going around tight corners um because otherwise it's like having a lock differential you know there on the front um, they're very, very light. You can see just how little plastic is on this chassis. And all the weight is down low. There is nothing up high. These AMRAC chassis absolutely fly. So I'm actually excited to get that chassis, even though it's wrong for this body. This body 
is an AFX. This is called the AP Corvette, uh, A production. Uh, it's based on an SCCA race car. It's a, um, an early uh, uh, third gen Corvette, the, um, uh, so like 68, it's got the chrome bumpers front and back uh, with the hard top and then the LED hood. These are the ones that were, you know, raced in all the SCCA races, Daytona, Sebring, things like that. And this is just a really cool paint scheme, the, the old Spirit 76 looking one. So uh, I did not have one of those, so excited to add that to my collection. This, however, this is an AMRAC body. This is the Porsche 911. Oh, it is gnarly cracked right there on top. You see that? And it is missing the glass. Man, that one has been ridden hard and put away wet. This car needs a lot of love. Uh, the stickers are in bad shape. Uh, but it's got kind of Brumos Porsche vibes. They're the wrong color. It's blue and blue instead of red and blue. Uh, but one of the best race cars, you can see the body really sucks in. And so you're really just covering the wheels, and that's about it. Really short front overhang. Um, the rear sticks out a little bit, but that's not nearly as important on a slot car. This one has a more modern, lifelike chassis on it. So this is your, your modern life. Like this is the M chassis, I believe. They have two, the T and the M. I always get them confused though. Uh, but yeah, that's, that is a good chassis for underneath that car. Um, I do have another one of these. It's a different paint scheme that I don't like. Um, I might steal the glass from that one uh, and clean this one up and, and use this one as my race car for, for when we're racing with the Fozar guys. That would be the Portland HO Slot Car Association of Racers. All right, let's see what else. Oh, yeah, okay. So this, this car right here um, normally sells for what I bought this entire lot for. So I could basically resell this car, and then all of these cars were free to my collection. And that might be what I end up doing. Uh, the chassis is in upside down. Yeah, this guy really had no idea what he had or how to take care of them. So this is an AFX. This is a later one. This is a Tomy. So AFX, when Aurora went out of business, uh, Tomy bought them up and started making the turbo chassis uh, and a bunch of newer bodies. AF Tomy has since sold AFX to Race Masters. Now AFX is their own standalone thing again. Um, but yeah, this is this is from the heyday of Tomy. This is the Porsche 959 in the Rothmans-esque uh, scheme. And yeah, this car is stupid rare. It goes for crazy money, uh, you know, triple digits, 200 bucks or so. Um, and this one's actually in pretty fine shape. Like I said, it's dirty. It needs a peroxide bath, but it's all there. No cracks, no breaks, no crushes on the A-pillars. Um, you can see the front isn't all beat up from crashing or anything like that. Um, and I believe this is the right chassis for it, so... That is fantastic. I'll have to get that one all cleaned up, see what that looks like. I don't know if I'm necessarily adding that one to my collection or selling it to cover the cost of the rest of these. All right, moving on. This is a Tyco. So in the 80s and 90s, and even, well, no, by the early 2000s, uh, Tyco had sold out to Mattel, then retained it, uh, Hot Wheels Racing. But Tyco back in the day, who made all the, the um, RC cars and stuff, they made slot cars, and they absolutely dominated the 80s um they're basically what put aurora out of business this is the 440 x2 this is one of if not whoops the best ho chassis of all time these things for whatever reason just absolutely fly and stick to the track like glue um super tunable you can buy a million zillion parts for them uh, they make them in a narrow chassis and a wide chassis the wide chassis the bodies get kind of big and ungainly and dumb looking but these these narrow chassis are nice this one is screwed up though you see this little tang here i'll use this to point you see that tang that's what holds the uh the shoe on so these these shoes they're held on with a, a little plastic tang the plastic tang is broken and missing on this one. So this chassis is actually junk. Um, I could try gluing something on there um, and putting shoes back on it, but I can almost guarantee that as soon as you run it, it's gonna break it back off there again and again and again. So this is this is a display only chassis, um, which is well enough because I will probably never race this car. Man, it's missing one sticker that sucks. Uh, this STP Indy car is actually really rare. I, I don't really collect Indy cars. I only collect F1. Uh, but again, this is one of my childhood cars, and I still have my childhood car, and it's in great shape, except for it's missing the rear spoiler, um, and the little, uh, the mount for the rear spoiler has been broken off of mine, and I believe I might have even cut off this back piece here. Um, so even though the front three quarters of mine is perfect, I never even broke these off, I was missing the back, and I was always bummed about it, and so just the fact that this one was in this lot with the wing um, just kind of made me happy, again, just kind of putting that, that childhood collection back together, so that's... 
that's two for my childhood days right there. And then a, a new one to race. Got a spare chassis for the wrong body. And then a collector piece there. Now this is more my style. This is an F1. And this is what I do collect. This one is another Tyco. This is a Lotus. Uh, and you can see it's got all the world championships on there. Tiso there on the side. Really, really cool car. So you can see this one. This one has the tangs, both tangs. And has the shoes still on, and the shoes have springs. You can see how they bounce. Boing, boing, boing. Yeah, so that, that chassis is actually in good shape. It's mismatched. They got a white axle and a gray axle. I don't know what colors are supposed to be on this body. Uh, but I will definitely get the right rims on there. Clean that one up. That one's going to be a beautiful add to my collection. They only made this body this one time, and that was it. I might be missing a piece. It's got these random holes up here. They look like... Maybe something clipped in there, like some sort of air intakes or something. I'll have to look that up and see what the dealio is with that. All right, moving on. Oh, we got one in here all by itself. So this is another AMRAC body. This is the Datsun 240Z. I actually have a really uh, popular video on the channel of me modifying one of these into a version of a real 1-1 race car of Ben Quartz. Uh, SCCA autocross car that's just totally awesome. One of my absolute favorite real life cars. Um, I'm afraid to race that because uh, I put so much work into it. So I was really looking for another one of these bodies that I could just race with the Fozar guys. You could see just how short this body is and how narrow and just really, really light, low down, nice uh, AMRAC chassis on it. This will be a great racing body. Uh, to race with the uh, the Fozar guys. So those two are definitely going in the race case. They're super happy about those. All right, we are on to our last uh, little sub-selection here. Let's see what we got. All right, one more Tyco. This is a, uh, so this is the, woo. this is that wide chassis I was telling you about. You see how much wider it is than the narrow? All that extra plastic there, and it makes for a much larger body. Um, the F40 isn't too, too bad because at least the real life car was wide and short like that. A lot of them, you could pop these axles out and move it to this forward piece and make a, a longer wheelbase. Those longer wheelbase pan chassis, man, they, they just get gigantic. Um, this one's got some deformation of the tire. It's got sat somewhere hot, so I might have to check this one out make sure it even runs. Uh, but just a Tyco F, uh, F40 Ferrari. Um, one of the better ones because it's just a real paint scheme instead of uh, a crazy one, which they did a lot of like neon stuff like that. I've always wanted one of these. I've got the, the Lamborghini Countach's in like real paint schemes and I never had a, a Ferrari to go with it. So it's looking forward to adding that one. All right, another Porsche. This one's another Tyco. One little sticker peel on there, but we can, we can glue that back down. So this is a Porsche... Uh, slant nose, so uh, 935, and this is a much, much rarer um, paint scheme than the one I have, which is a yellow, orange, and red one. Uh, this black one was always way cooler. Man, this one is just super clean. I don't think this body has ever been raced. This chassis has. This chassis is clearly not on this car. So this chassis is another ruined one. You see here how there's just one tang? There should be two there to hold the body in between those lines. Uh, like here on the Ferrari, see how it's got the two tangs and it holds the body there in between. So this chassis has been crashed and the body went forward so hard that it actually broke the tangs off of both sides. So this chassis is actually junk. Again, display chassis if you just want to have a chassis underneath the body. But you can see you can't, can't race with it anymore because the body is just super loose on it. But man, that is a really clean body. All right, and then our last car is a GTP. This is a Jaguar, and this is another uh, Tomy era AFX. This one's got the turbo chassis, the right one, and it's got the gold rims on it, which I believe is correct for the Jag. So that's super nice. And yeah, it's just the Jag pace scheme. And again, a little yellowed, so I'm going to have to peroxide bath that one to clean it up. But man, that body is really nice. So yeah, a couple of junk chassis. That's to be expected. Um... That kind of thing happens with uh, with these cars, especially older ones and ones that people don't know what they're dealing with or doing. But that was a really, really, really good find on a Facebook Marketplace for me to get uh, these particular cars at the price I got them. And, and yeah, it definitely filled some holes in my collection, both collection-wise, 
uh, for childhood purposes, collection-wise for rarity, and um, racing cars. So super pumped to get all of these out of the Nomaicho collection. If you like this video, if you want to see any more HO slot car stuff, um, take a look through my older videos. I got a whole bunch uh, racing with Fozar, um, like going through a whole race day at one of their tracks, um, unboxing other slot cars, looking at, at some collections of different uh, slot cars. If you guys want to see all of them or more of them, if you're interested in the F1s, I actually have probably about two dozen different uh, vintage F1s. If you're into the GT cars, uh, I've got, again, probably about two dozen uh, different vintage prototype racers. Um, you know, hit me up in the comments. Let me know. Happy to do these. Again, really love slot cars. They're, they're my my passion besides the big cars, they're a great winter hobby uh, to keep your actual racing skills sharp, especially up here in the Pacific Northwest. We've got Fozar, like I said, that that Portland-based HO club, man. Uh, they're, they've up to, they're up to four professional tracks in the club. They race just about every single week, all winter long, and those guys are competitive. Um, and it absolutely keeps you on the game. You, you get to still do tuning. You still get to play with tires. You, you get to work on your reaction times, hand-eye coordination, uh, and just kind of keep up on the mental game that it takes to uh, race the real cars. So I'm definitely looking forward to being able to re-engage with those guys uh, and do a lot more racing uh, next off-season so that I'm sharp for the next on-season. So anyways, that's been today's video. Hope you enjoyed this unboxing. Uh, if you like what you saw, uh, shoot me a, a thumbs up, subscribe, let me know uh, down in the comments what you thought about slot cars, and we'll catch you in the next video.